All right. Well, thanks everybody for uh, showing up and uh, thanks for letting me participate virtually. It's uh, really hard for me to travel right now. So the, the virtual options are much appreciated, although I'd like to see many of you in person. Uh, hopefully we can do that again uh, soon. So this is some work that uh, one of the organizers, Leilani and I have uh, worked on over the last little while. Um, a lot of you may know I've been working on this concept anticipatory thinking for some time now and it's kind of exciting to start combining uh, symbolic and uh, statistical methods together to to make anticipatory thinking uh, concrete progress in it in, in AI so uh, if you'll bear with me here we're going to put a lot of ideas together and I'm going to talk through them so please uh, make use of the slack channel uh, Ping Leilani or, and I uh, afterwards if you're interested in talking about it more. Because this, I feel like this might be a, a, a fly through uh, on, a, on a lot of uh, complex ideas. Okay. So the, the, the motivation for all this is that AI agents need to manage risk in an open world. Uh, this uh, little Venn diagram off to the side shows uh, the unknown risks in pink the known risks in yellow and those that are mitigated in, in green. So you can think about the, the green as what would be present uh, in a, you know, a training or a test set for uh, or any examples in a knowledge base. And um, the, the reality is, is we don't really know how AI systems manage risk when they're deployed. There's a huge unknown out there about what they might encounter in the real world, especially, and, and I'm talking specifically about an open world, ta open world task. So we, we see this all the time um, in things like autonomous vehicles. And we're gonna use autonomous vehicles uh, throughout this, this talk as a, as a concrete example. So on the top uh, crash scene, you can see a car that's ran into a concrete barrier, misclassified as the horizon, and so continued driving straight into it. Another example, um, you know, it's just a simple object misclassification. Another one is at the scene level. You can see everything's classified correctly on the bottom image. Those are uh, traffic lights, but they're being they're loaded on the back of a truck. Now these are pretty popular examples, but they just kind of show the 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 scale, the uh, the breadth of new things you can see in the world that you know you and I would probably know how to interpret and act, but uh, not AI systems don't always. And I use the term AI systems in autonomous vehicles. Uh, it, it's mainly object classification systems, but generally I think this, this holds in, a lot, in any sort of open world domain. You can make mistakes. You don't always know what, what they're going to be ahead of time. So the, the real challenge here is uh, agents need to be able to do risk management. Um, and uh, what we don't know is uh, these, these low frequency, high impact risks that human decision makers, we'd be able to adapt and uh, know what to do. Traffic lights on the back of a truck, no problem. We know exactly what to do. We don't stop, we don't stop and start on the road, um, but it's difficult for uh, object recognition systems to do the same thing. So we, we want to manage these uh, because they have bad consequences. Crashing, you know, starting and stopping on a freeway can all lead to uh, fatalities, uh, at least in autonomous vehicles. So um, people have probably seen this before, this long tail of errors. And just to, to you know, uh, nail this point home, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the long tail of errors that are not going to show up uh, in any kind of like observation bias that you would. And, training or test data or a lot of uh, cases that, that you might be able to engineer the knowledge around. Okay, so this, uh, this concept of anticipatory thinking, um, we get, it, what we really want to do is uh, assess this little half moon shaped here, is what are agents prepared for that they haven't seen already? And there are ways to do that with existing data and that, but we, we really want to scale this up and come up with uh, a method that can really cover a lot of that uh, unknown risk uh, pink circle out there and find out what our agents prepared for. So we have the formal uh, definition of anticipatory thinking uh, that I'm using is above. 
the deliberate exploration analysis of relevant alternative system states. So um, the, the, the claim is that this is necessary for open world risk management. And we have what I'll talk through next is our, our approach for this. And the, the key part of our approach is that we use synthetic data as pre-factuals. So a, a fact assumed to be few and true in the future for doing pro, pro, prospective branching anticipatory thinking. So the, there are three types of anticipatory thinking in that reference below. One of them is pro, prospective branching. So the idea with this is assume something's true in the future and then see what the result would be, the resulting actions would be. Okay, so this is a little uh, diagram of what uh, our assessment for anticipatory thinking is, and uh, we'll walk through each of those pieces with the remaining slides. Uh, so uh, a task in, in this case, um, we, we just want some impactful behavior uh, that's initiated after perceiving something. So in an autonomous vehicle case, stopping at a stop sign after perceiving a stop sign. Um, uh, again, I mentioned object recognition systems. That's kind of the name of the game here. Uh, if, if you think about that, um, then to really test out this task and go through all those unknown risks in stopping at a stop sign, we need this big corpus, a repository of in the wild perceptions of stop signs. So that's all that we mean by this top, uh, top repository here is a bunch of labeled pictures of stop signs. Um, what, what, we, what we do next is uh, we, we want a structured representation of, uh, of these perceptions. So uh, what we use is a knowledge graph uh, of these objects. This is just an overly simplified picture of a stop sign with, you can see it's octagonal, it's the color red. You could, there's a bunch of other ones that are, that are generally agreed upon. Um, and uh, that's the idea. So these property, properties are commonly agreed upon features of a, of a perception, in this case, an object. I mentioned, you know, for our AV examples, um, the stop sign red, octagonal, the list goes on. Uh, the next step is to, is to take those two inputs, a stop sign and the properties, and uh, generate variations from those and uh, come up, manipulate those original perceptions in ways that are plausible and that would occur in the real world. So for an autonomous vehicle, we, we think about uh, weathering. So stop signs sit out there, they get faded. Um, if they're not uh, manufactured correctly, correctly, they can, they can uh, bubble, they get mold on them. There's uh, one near my hat, near, near my, uh, my, my work, excuse me that's uh, stuck to the back of a, a square sign and it looks it really looks like the stop signs square not uh, not octagonal but in this case we're just going to modify the color property in, uh, extracted out of our knowledge graph so uh, the these gears what it does under the hood is searching for property changes to identify hard variations that will initiate a, a misclassification by an object recognition system or, a class, or just an off-the-shelf off classifier. Um, okay. So that, that's kind of what it looks like. You can see the original stop sign over there on the left, and then we want to modify the red channel of that stop sign and see what, uh, what results. Now, doing that on its own right is uh, okay. I think um, that's not really um, what, what we're about in the cognitive systems community. We want to understand how it relates to humans. So this AT alignment uh, goal is to assess uh, uh, an AT, the AT of an agent and how similar it is to a human decision maker. And that's what the, uh, the red and the blue uh, heads are there. Um, and what they represent is aggressive and defensive drivers. So the, the same stop sign manipulated uh, to be really red or really faded, what would an aggressive driver do? What would a defensive driver do? What would an object recognition system do? And, and sort of get a distribution of, of what would happen there. And you could, you could do something like a simple t-test to 
see if they come from similar distributions or not. So that's the idea. It's not to, not to nail down a specific number for um, the autonomous vehicles object recognition system, but see how it is characterized relative to existing decision maker frameworks. So it's kind of a extreme example, an aggressive and defensive driver for uh, driving. You can think of other domains. There's probably a lot more nuance. Okay, so uh, just some initial results going through this. Uh, I'll, I'll talk through it a little bit. Um, so we use uh, a few road signs from uh, Kaggle's uh, public data. They've got a road sign detection data set with some stop signs in it. We used uh, ConceptNet for our knowledge graph, um, for our, our generating variations of stop signs. We walked th through changing pixels using stochastic gradient descent until we found a uh, pixel combination of, a, of the color of the stop sign that uh, resulted in a misclassification. And we used uh, like a pre-trained ResNet 50 uh, model to identify and no humans. We didn't do any human subject research in this. Uh, this is on Leilani and I's kind of spare time, so we didn't go through an IRB or didn't want to go through an IRB on this, but uh, our, our goal is to do that. Okay, so uh, of, of the 10 signs we, we took from Kaggle, this is just a, you know, just a quick example. They, we, were all, we were able to find that they actually fooled the classifier very early on um, whenever we modified each of the three channels. So you, you can see the, uh, the number of iterations using stochastic gradient descent was very quick to, to find a, a mis misclassification. Um, this is uh, another sort of view on that. Um, you can see the, the, there's 10 images here the index in the on the left hand side and their true label um, and how many iterations it took uh, to to of of red green and blue varia variations of the color to to fool the classifier to mis get a misclassification and you can see it doesn't take very many times to get a very different uh, uh, view on it you can you can see some of them uh, spotlight, digital clock, uh, I think there's an analog clock in there too, but you can imagine that that's related to uh, the, the color uh, specifically that, that's being used. We're not changing anything but the color of the stop sign in this. And you can imagine a human would be pretty resilient to the color. I'm, I'm kind of a defensive driver, so I would stop at any color stop sign. Um, maybe more aggressive drivers would take the opportunity to, to fly through the intersection, but uh, overall, you know, this is not an exhaustive uh, list by any means, but it looks like from these 10 examples that uh, this, this particular classifier isn't that robust to color changes on the stop sign. Um, it's an initial result. Take it for what you want. We do want to compare this to uh, what, what humans would do. And so we're not, we're not making any big claims, but we, we've set up this uh, framework so that we can do sort of bigger experiments, uh, more data, more properties, more uh, pre-trained classifiers with, with humans uh, to compare to. Hey, Adam, this is your two-minute warning. Okay, that's uh, perfect timing because I'm coming, to, I'm right on the conclusion. Um, so the idea here is that we really need to understand how AI systems, deployed AI systems manage risk, particularly these low frequency, high impact ones. Um, and our approach uses anticipatory thinking to uh, characterize that half moon shape um, and specifically the, the pr prospective branching that I mentioned before. So if this was the case in the future, what would be the response be? Uh, I mentioned ways to extend this work earlier, but we want to go beyond a single object as a stop sign. Um, you can see objects on that uh, traffic light uh, figure on the on the x-axis. Um, you can imagine all different uh, prompts that would uh, you, you'd want a an autonomous vehicle to respond to. So traffic cones, structures, uh, changes in the road, and uh, we'd want to like change the scene level, change the direction they're oriented, add uh, different types of weather, uh, fog, rain. Um, I think 
uh, there's a lot of state of the art methods out there that would come off the shelf and do a really, uh, really interesting job here at uh, assessing these uh, uh, autonomous systems, uh, sorry, autonomous vehicles specifically, and then uh, autonomy in general. Um, and that's all I have. Um, happy to take uh, questions now and uh, or, or uh, take them in the Slack channel uh, later. Right. Thank you, Adam. Um, I bet. Nice to see you. So, um, so maybe I missed it, but to, to do the anticipatory thinking, you have to have a predictive model of some kind, and they can take different forms. Right? They could mm -hmm. be qualitative, it could be quantitative, it could be yep. deterministic, or it could be stochastic. Sure. And, so, uh, and those have different implications for what you would do with all this. So, can you just in in the in the work you're doing, what what are what you, what are your what are your favoring and and uh, or can you say anything more about that choice? Sure. I, I mean, we were we were favoring off whatever was off the shelf and available. So we that that was why we ended up with a, a the ResNet 50 classifier. There's nothing special about it. We're happy to, you know, we, I mean, I think that's the goal is we're we're using AI agent in the in the right. general sense. Well, it's well, not well, necessarily predictive. Well, sorry, example, go ahead. The talk the, the talk I gave yesterday. Where I was, where I have this agent architecture, and it does mental simulation using quantitative models, is actually doing deterministic prediction. You know, reviewers, ACS reviewers, sometimes say, "Ah, oh, well, you should be using qualitative methods because they're more abstract and more robust and cheaper." And I can imagine that argument being made here too, right? So, uh, sure. particularly if you've got if you've got some common sense background knowledge, like Lailani works with, with sometimes, uh, that you can imagine doing something at that level, and that might be all you need. To, to really, but you, you don't really care about the details, right? You care about the big picture. So yeah. qualitative representations might be worth pursuing even if you have to, 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 to build, build something by hand. Yeah, I mean, our, our kind of goal was not, not to build any reasoner by, at all. <laughs> it was really just to come up with the assessment and compare them against uh, different, you know, different types of decision makers and human or otherwise. So we're, we're not trying to favor uh, any, any particular the audience. Or not, not yeah. necessarily a question from the audience, but also to answer. So I've worked on self-driving cars for a while. Hi, hi Adam. <laughs> hey, Leilani, good to see you. Of, you know, we would love to use these types of architectures, and I think uh -huh. especially in a lot of my work, but the problem is, is that the state-of-the-art autonomous vehicle architectures that are doing object and scene recognition are just like ResNet 50. And so that was basically one of the ideas, that was one of the reasons we looked at this is to show just by querying a common sense knowledge base and finding the salient features, which are basically shape and color, we can fool these networks very, very easily. And these are the types of assessments that we should be doing and to show that we should be using cognitive architecture. <laughs> yeah, great answer, Lenny. We have one more question on Slack. Um, do you intend to move to characterizing favorable AT qualities outside of human likeness? Is there a way to quantify preparedness, not subject to the same long tail errors? To, to quantify preparedness, um, may, maybe. I mean, the uh, the idea here was to compare it to what different types of humans would do in a in a very for a very specific task, uh, making a task more complex, making uh, making it less general, uh, like more, more subject matter expertise required. I, I think those are the variations we're, we're looking to do. And now I forgot the question and I don't know if I'm answering it anymore. Do you want me to repeat it? Please, <laughs> I'd like to answer the question. Uh, I, think, I think the uh, question asker who is Stephen is, is good with the answer. Okay, good, good. Um, Okay, let's thank our speaker once again. Thank you all. Thanks, Adam.